To avoid loss of control on the ground, we must first ask the question, what causes loss of control on the ground? Tailwheel pilots. Nosewheel pilots. Students. You might be inclined to think it's everyone except your type of pilot, but the reality is, loss of control on the ground occurs in almost one quarter of all non-fatal accidents with all types of pilots. And insurance experts tell us a lot more occur that don't meet the NTSB's reporting criteria. It's a problem we all need to focus on. And if we can reduce these numbers, we might just be able to reduce insurance premiums as well. Because these are expensive to cover. Loss of control on the ground occurs most often during landing, and it all starts with an unstable approach. The culprit for this instability is frequently lack of airspeed control, more specifically, too much airspeed. We've known this for years. Let's check out some timeless advice from this VHS we made back in 2002. The Air Safety Foundation and FAA recommend a stabilized approach. That's called stabilized because power and control inputs are basically static yielding the proper airspeed and descent rate. The goal is to establish the proper approach angle, airspeed, power setting, and configuration by the time the pilot reaches a target altitude, say 500 or 1,000 feet above the airport elevation, so the airplane flies itself to the runway. If you're not in final configuration on airspeed and altitude, you're not ready to land. That's better. For every landing, the key is knowing the appropriate airspeed for your aircraft and flying that speed on final every time. If you're off, even by a few knots, debrief and ask yourself why. Another common problem is failure to control drift late in the flare and touchdown. Often pilots are so focused on the vertical component of the touchdown, they either forget they'll need more control input to manage drift as they slow, or they relax the controls altogether. A good exercise to practice drift control is the runway drift exercise. All right, so you're going to take it all the way down to the flare, and you're going to flare. You're just going to, instead of powering off to touch down, you're going to add a little bit of power to stay in that flare altitude. Make sense? Yeah. Come off your power a little bit. You're a little too fast. Okay, now drift to the left center. Another radio. Say your position again. We're 13 miles northeast. Nice. This is nice. Stabilize. Two, Yankee Roger. Make sure to enroll my two, three reports. Drift to the right center. Correcting properly can be tricky, and the work isn't over when you've touched down either. You've got to remain active on the controls during rollout and taxi. Sometimes it might be safer to land at a different airport that has runways more aligned with the wind. Making that decision is easier when you've made a backup plan and have some nearby airports in mind. Ultimately, you've got to do what's safest for you. The FBO might be inconvenienced by having to cancel some rentals after yours, but it's far better than filing an insurance claim. If an airport is reporting snow or ice, it's a contaminated runway. Know your airplane's POH values for these conditions and become well practiced in operating in them. And if you're not, go somewhere else. You can also check out our safety tip video on runway surface conditions. A link is provided in the description. If an airport isn't reporting, then conduct a low pass to check out conditions for yourself. Avoiding loss of control on the ground isn't complicated, it simply takes discipline. That's especially true during taxi and takeoff, when it's easy to get complacent. Let's commit to flying on speed over the fence and being vigilant about wind correction from taxi out through taxi back in. Attention to these two items will help us in avoiding loss of control on the ground.